you mentioned Melodica when he started going into that yeah, story. I have one. Oh, oh yeah, my I'm office. aware because the last gig we ever played, the gig where he quit <laughs> by text message. <laughs> This video is brought to you by Select a Ticket. We'll hear more about them later. For now, let's get on to today's video. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to local music and the people that make it, including me and my guests. And my guests are two-thirds of a three-piece rock band that specializes in blending multiple genres. They're probably not seeing you do all that, by the way. <laughs> I'm going to do it anyway. Um, their big claim to fame is apparently they're responsible for the internet. And... <laughs> They, their band includes former members of bands like American Discord, Bio, uh, Bipolar, and Los Exeter, and The Suspense. And uh, previously, I've reviewed them on the channel. I've reviewed their live performance at a couple different places, I think. And I've reviewed their uh, cover album, Undercover, which is out now. Please welcome to the channel. Ready, ready, ready? Oh, oh! <laughs> Please. Wild Stein! No, just kidding. Please welcome to the channel, Algorithm. Welcome, guys. Cheers. I want to. I want to hear more about Biopolar. Bi Biopolar. That sounds like a cool band. I want to see that band. I sold a. I sold a couch once to a former bass player for them. Oh. Wow. <laughs> so a Biopolar. Yeah. For Bipolar. I don't even know who they are. And his name was. Uh, I think his name was Tom. That's crazy. I knew Tom. a guy named Tom who was the bassist for Bipolar. Yeah. We don't like to talk about it. <laughs> well, before we get going, if you're watching this. And you've no idea who Algorithm is. By the way, is it Algorithm or Algorithm? Is tomato, it, tomato. Don. Is it is it Foo Fighters or Foo Fighters? Tomato, tomato is <laughs> yeah. the correct answer. Right. Whatever on. makes it stick well, in your if, brain. If you have no idea who these guys are or what the band is, thank you for watching. I really appreciate you watching just because you like watching my stuff. But go ahead and introduce yourselves. Tell them who you are and what you do in the band. Take it away, dude. I'm Carl. I play guitar. I sing. I write some songs. And I do audio production. I'm Tom, and I do some of those same things, but not really the same way. I do, like, the guitar, but, like, the bass one. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I do sing. I do sing sometimes, and uh, I do write some songs. I do all those things, yeah. Um, I don't do audio production, but I do do video production, and I just said do-do. <laughs> said do-do. Yeah, and I beat him to that, too. So, uh, I feel really proud of myself today. Yeah, I got the dad jokes on lock, and, uh, oh, yeah, we're in a band called Algorithm. We're in a band called Algorithm. We're in my friend True. Josh. Yep. This gin. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, hey, we're going to get things going here a little weird. Um, you don't care why, but I have a bottle of, of sake, Japanese rice wine, I believe it is. Correct. And we're going to go ahead and sip this because we're not dumb. We're not going to shoot this. So we just did gin. Now we're doing juice. You did gin. I'm Man, doing whiskey. This is juice. He's doing beer. Ooh. Laid back. See what I mean? With it's my mind really not my much money. to it. In my money, oh, no, on that's my delicious. Mind. That's delicious sake. We got the juice and the lemon. Good. Now, see, now yeah. I really, now I got to go out for some sushi. Right. That's what happens. But that's not what I remember sake. sake being. Oh. Re really? Okay. <laughs> Interviews going I am great. I'm testing the audio levels on. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, Jack. My audio guy off camera. I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> one day I'm gonna. One day I'm gonna have somebody off camera to say that to. Anyway, <laughs> if you want to have some fun like we are, if you want to be reviewed, interviewed, or both on the channel, hit me up using the email address or the Room Six social media link down in the description. That's also where you'll find all sorts of ways to support the channel. Find out what else I'm doing, like my uh, podcast that I run. I run a couple, uh, two podcasts. A couple too. Anyway, <laughs> and uh, other is that four? Yeah, and other ways that you can uh, help me. Help support the local music scene. And uh, what the heck, while you're down there, go ahead and subscribe, like, and share. Thanks. All right, that's the obligatory uh, YouTube spiel over. Love it. I was trying to Vanna White Push here, that here in a little bit there. How'd I do? Did I do all right? Did I got the job? It's good. I'm sad to say there's going to be a, a, a graphic. I'll be Jack. <laughs> nah, not really. He dies so, at the end of Titanic. Wow. Too, well, actually, we probably shouldn't make jokes about that right oh, now. Oh, yeah. It's, it's definitely <laughs> a situation happening around the At time of recording, I really... we have no idea whether they got found or not. But Last I heard was, were no, they a bunch of like, was about an hour ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, no, no. Here, let's talk about it. We have like 29 like, more days that we can make jokes about it before it's not funny. Were they a bunch <laughs> of like rich folks no one cares about anyway, right? 
Did I get that right? Yeah. Oh. Fact check me in the comments below. All right. My money's on the orcas. Future, future Josh, tangent. So, um, <laughs> no, apparently I just heard today on TikTok, my, my, my source, my source for news every day, um, that apparently there was a guy who got fired after numerous times years ago, like eight years ago, telling people, Hey, this is a problem on this exact sub. This is a problem. The exact thing that's, that's caused the problem. <laughs> and, um, he got fired apparently. Uh, I think he filed a suit against him or something. So it's kind of one of those I Maybe hear you were that whistle deserted? blowing. But wasn't it, wasn't the CEO of the company down in the thing? Isn't that what's happening? Isn't that the score? Well, it, not just him, but yeah, they had a couple. So your company does some like shady stuff, which is what it uh-huh. sounds like, and now you're trapped in the bottom of the ocean because karma's a bitch, right? And for those like of you that said, have no idea what we're talking about, look up Ocean Gate, which it's Ocean Gate Gate. Oh no! <laughs> oh, is that wait? That's the name of the sub? Is Ocean Gate? It, that's the name of the company. No, the funny nah. enough, the name of the tiny twenty-two foot long so sub, that's why the Ocean submersible Gate. watercraft is Titan, but it's actually we. You sit on the floor. It's a carbon fiber tube. Did you say it's a, actually we? Yes, <laughs> it's a carbon we, fiber tube with a window at one end, and they all sit on the floor, and a man with a video game controller, an actual video game controller, yes. drives it around under the water. And what boggles my mind is they, they had an actual goddamn candy. media day. Like, <laughs> they had they had the video controller for, for media day. <laughs> like, what? Yeah. I mean that's like ain't broke, don't fix it. I mean yeah. that, that's, like, wrong. that's like having that's a media true. day for your hotel and the lobby's not finished. And if you know, you know. Anyway, <laughs> I have a quick question for you. Let's get back to why we're here. Uh, I got a quick answer. 42. The answer is always 42. So that's a quick answer. All right, I'm sticking with what he said. All right, what's the question? It's good. I gotta grab the reins here. I wanted to ask, who made the website? <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope that answers the question. All right, off to the next. I one. think Tom no. bought the. Does Tom Tom has the template under control? I sort of go and write copy, and, and that uh, explains why yours is the only. Member with a bio on the yeah, website. Yeah, it broke, and I and I can't sit these guys down for five. I just thought it was funny. Minutes. I was like, I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, hold on. <laughs> I used to have a bio. I think we broke the website. I told you time. a while back. Carl's been handling the maintenance. I think I kind of <laughs> set it up, but then it's been a collaborative effort yeah. ever since. And I mean, it was yeah. a collaborative effort getting it up and running. So like, that's why we had to kind of look at each other and be like, we both have experience in this field. Right? Yeah, so, like, <laughs> I, know. I used to build websites for people on the side, so that's why it, it's one of those things. I, I it bugs the crap out of me when I see a website that's like, mm, oh, as the person, you don't like lorem ipsum. As the person, oh, there's not even lorem ipsum. There's just nothing. As the person with the buttons, it drives me crazy. Okay, too. okay, Stupid. we could at least put lorem ipsum. It sounds like we got uh, caught it's slipping so facto, here lorem on camera. Ipsum, yeah, yeah, so domine. They say, by the way, <laughs> your website sucks. You don't know what lorem. No, it's just is. funny because I'm like, Google it. I was like, click. Okay. Click bio. Click. Yeah. Wait, wait. Why? Why is Carl? Anyway, so that explains. He's that. the cool what, what we, what we really want you to spend your time on uh, when you're at algorithmlb.com is at the algorithm swag shop. The ass is where you will find all things yes. great. Yeah. Yeah. Every good website needs a great ass. And ours <laughs> ain't no sleeper. So check out the algorithm swag shop today. Good night, everybody. Anyway. Hey, bro. So I'll take a shameless plug. Right, you, know, you open it up, bro. I'm going to take it. All right. So before I get into my usual interview questions, I, I mentioned in the intro about your uh, your latest uh, EP, the cover EP, under, uh, Undercover. Yeah, I was right. We were Undercover. Yes. I was wondering, why those four songs? They're a great kind of cross-section representation, oh, but why question. those four songs? And And... Well, I'll Why? take the lead on that Because you didn't do them in any way remotely close to the way they were originally done. And but, we tried. But it worked. That. But it totally worked. So, so it was really kind of like a collection of really like a lot of years. Like Carl and I have been playing music in various bands for like over a decade now. And some of them had been like things we'd done in the past, but kind of in different iterations. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it kind of, I think we all kind of got like picked a song. Like tracks like Running Down a Dream we were doing for a while. We kind of did at the end. Of the Los Exeter days. It's actually still on Bandcamp. 
Oh yeah, I yeah. think I saw you play that at the dive bar. Exactly. So, and that was kind of like, I always thought we did that track justice, but it just didn't land because of just the way we were going about things in the old band. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things we felt like it still had legs on it. So we really wanted to do that track right and get a good production. Yep. Uh, but songs like Tiki God, that was all Carl. He was like, yep. "We're doing this song," and I was like, "Fuck yeah!" So you know, like <laughs> I, I've never heard anybody cover it. Yeah, yeah. I'm a, a big fan. A I'm, I'm a big fan of the Pusa, the President of the United States of America. Pot USA, yes, Pot USA, also. But uh, like they, I, in my opinion, not a bad song in the catalog. I've listened to their stuff front to back over and over, and I always go back to the Tiki song always. Right. And the Tiki other thing Tiki. that always with that band that gets me is the tones. Man, these guys just have the tones, just tones, tones for on days. tones on tones. Yep, we're talking delicious guitar tones here. <laughs> you know, <laughs> delectable. All right, um, one more question for the band. Oh, I'm sorry, we never talked about. The uh, the elephant not in the room. Who are we missing from the band? We're, we're Whoa, missing, we're missing someone. We're missing. Wait, did we leave? Not, hold on, did we leave him at home again? I think this is a reoccurring theme. If you subscribe to our Instagram channels, you'll see that we always forget our drummer. Um, <laughs> it's always an accident. <sighs> Sorry, Brian. Sorry, Brian. <laughs> and also, I just got to say that's what happens when you go to Sacramento. <laughs> so, Brian, um, I think that answers your question, right? Br Brian, <laughs> Brian. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, we love B. Hanks. He's uh, he's Sorry, out traveling. Brian. He's out traveling Jesus. with the fam. But uh, you know, this is uh, you know, it happens. You nice. Know. One more <laughs> one more question for the the band members that are here. Any plans for cowbell beer coming soon? For what? Cowbell beer. Huh? We we don't got money like that. But if we <laughs> did, is... he's talking about the real. I love this. I love this. Oh. Because we make content. And oh. Because I as you can it. see. I forgot. <laughs> because you can see in our content that we're kind of delinquents. We make this shit and we forget it. And then people bring it up to us and we're like. This is my bread and butter. Just, fuck you say to me? This I, is, I love when bands you, have lots of What are you talking about, cowbell beer? And we did. We had to think. And actually, you know what? I have to you further drank the joke. Out of the I did. I have to further the joke even more because. That was Carl's real. He said, I want to drink beer out of a cowbell. And we said, fuck yeah. And we <laughs> forgot it right I'm sure. I'm sure by now I've put up like the clip, part of the clip or something. <laughs> yeah, if you haven't, so, you clearly have not subscribed to our Instagram. But if you're in a pinch at home and you're trying to drink beer and all of your glasses are dirty or broken like they usually are in my house, just get a cowbell. If you want, you can put it in the freezer for like five, ten minutes ahead of time. Get it nice and cold. Put your beer in there. <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> you know what else makes a nice sound? <laughs> That's nice true. Room 6 mug, maybe. Hmm? That's true. You can get your room 6.shop. Shameless plug. Right there. I've actually got tons of mugs that have all sorts of sayings like, support a drummer, sticks ain't cheap, you know, or support a bassist, strings they're ain't not, cheap. They're not, and that's why I've had... Uh, I'm not even going to get into that. Yeah, right. But I, uh, yeah. So, Carl... That's me. Carl! Uh, your hot sauce chauffeur? Coral. Hot sauce what? Chauffeur. Chauffeur. I mean, I eat a lot of hot sauce. I have, in the past, made hot sauce and sold it to people for money. Yeah, right. Um, and you called yourself a hot sauce chauffeur. I did. When did I see? These he did his things. homework. I, these are more things I don't remember. A chauffeur? Connoisseur, maybe. But not even. So chauffeur. But I did used to chauffeur my own hot sauce to the workplace. I think that's what it was. When I used to like make less money... And I worked at a place that other people in the establishment got tips, but I didn't. And mm -hmm. I wanted to get the tips, but I wasn't in that lane. So I brought smoked meats from my of my own design and hot sauce, also of my own design. And I would sell it to these cats, and then I would also come home with some dollars in my pocket. It was fantastic. But I haven't made hot sauce in a while. I've been too busy working way too many hours at my day job. So, <laughs> so if, you're, if you're from the IRS and you're watching this... <laughs> <laughs> Tax no, evasion, that's how the Capone. No, man, I'm good sauce. up to 30K. We live in Nevada. Nevada likes the entrepreneurs here. <laughs> I'm just saying, you, you make some hot sauce, everyone wants to give you money. You make a little bath. I will make hot sauce again. It is a, it is a, it, food in general, cooking is like a, got a special place for me. I worked in restaurants for like 15 years. I'll never not make food at right. some level or other. It's fantastic. So, yeah. Uh, cool. Tomas. Jen was a. Weird choice. Anyway. <laughs> Gin, beer, and sake. I am going to regret tomorrow. It on a Tuesday. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Tastes like Christmas and bad decisions. So apparently your kid's Instagram has a nice following. Are you aware of how many followers that kid has? Bay, Bay has way more engagement than she has followers, actually. She's only sitting, what, like... 69. 
She needs one more follower. Nice. She's uh, actually at, <laughs> at the time I wrote it up. It was it was six, it was like sixty nine something, and I was like, that's that's nice. good for a baby that can't type, bro. I know. Like uh, she, she can't like how old? Okay. Like, okay. <laughs> I, I clearly work in the social media sphere because I'm like. She's only got 69 followers, Josh. What the fuck are you saying? Like, for a two-year-old, that is pretty impressive. You know? It's pretty nice. I'm just saying, when you see some of those with like hundreds of likes, you're like, damn, and she's got a good eye for detail and how to curate engagement. <laughs> she outsources the editing. She says everything to India. That's really so, true. <laughs> Wish I could. So, sticking with you for a second, uh, and the whole social media thing, he's also the host of New Woo Sessions at New Woo uh, Cannabis Dispensary, where he works. And you've hosted some pretty incredible people on your, your podcast. Yeah, it's a podcast, right? Yeah. It is a, definitely a podcast. Cool. I have people come on here and call this a podcast. I'm like, this is not a podcast. <laughs> I do yeah. way too much editing for this to be a podcast. <laughs> I feel that. Um, yeah. But I was wondering, what's your most like shocking or crazy new sessions moment where you're like, wow, I can't believe we got that on camera. Hmm. Or maybe, maybe it didn't get on camera. Yeah, I mean... That's a that's a good question. I, I mean, mean, I gather everybody's pretty chill because uh, of the, the, the pie. But you think you know what I mean? We've had some 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 weird moments. Uh, I mean, I guess like on camera, I don't know. For me, it's always hard because it's like this is my job. This is how I'm like feeding my kid, and I'm gonna go do this podcast where I get like belligerently high and talk to celebrities and try not to fuck. Can up. you get belligerently so, high on pot? Yeah. Uh, it's hard if you've been doing it as long as I have, but you know, uh, yeah. it's always good. That's the curveball when you're doing these episodes. And sometimes you're at the end of it looking like a total idiot. And uh, so, but you don't say. Yeah, it's kind of the gig, though, right? Yeah. Um, I had a, a moment. I was actually telling this story earlier. It wasn't on camera, but it was before I did the interview with Rob Van Dam. Uh-huh. He. Uh, okay, so I'm not a, a, a pro wrestling guy. So I was trying to like, okay, do the interview gloss on the fact that you don't know anything about his career, right? Except. Cool. So what I did for homework was follow his comedy career, which is... <laughs> That's uh, right. I forgot yeah. about that. It's kind of a divisive topic. But uh, <laughs> anyway, I, wa- I watched a ton of YouTube videos about Rob Van Dan's fucking comedy. And then we sat down. And I was like, yeah, man, I was watching a ton of your videos, man. Really like it. You kind of remind me of Mitch Hedberg. He's like, Mitch Hedberg's my favorite comedian. I'm like, mine too. He's like, what's your favorite Mitch Hedberg joke? And I was like... Fuck on the spot. Ah, uh, you just got gate kept. <laughs> exactly. And then, like, I don't know. I just pulled one out of my ass in that moment. But then, like, for the rest of the interview, I was like, Rob Van Dam and I like Rob fucking, uh, not Rob Van Dam. Uh, <laughs> Mitch Hedberg. We both love Mitch Hedberg. And uh, that was a cool moment, you know? Yeah, totally. And then uh, I got belligerently high and looked like an idiot on camera. Noise. I'm here doing it again, right? Oh, no, I'm not high. Not high. I'm, fucking I'm triple fisting. Show. He, yeah, and I didn't even know that was his thing. <laughs> you have to, like... I went on a room six interview because yeah. I got high. <laughs> See, one of us likes wrestling I, more than yeah. the other. We should have just tapped in Carl. Be like, Carl, you want to switch jobs for a day and watch me? Fuck do, it. I, do I need to install some ropes? No, because here? I think at this point Ding. in Rob Van Dam's career, he would probably rather talk about what you talked to him about. Yeah. Than what I know about his career. Yeah. No, he, he lit up. He, he really did. You know, it was also funny because uh, I got Rob Van Dam's phone number. He like sent me a text not that long ago. Uh, he was like in the airport with a Nubu bag and he was like doing the thing and I was like, wow. I like woke up and I was like, I have a missed text from Rob Van Dam. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? I hope on? he posted that right away. Wait. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> on that note, Tom and I went and saw Turnstile in October last year. He did. Right? Great show. Great show. And so we're doing the thing and we're rolling out to the show and we get Tom, I mean Tom drive. We get in the car <laughs> and Tom's do. phone rings. Oh, that's always a yeah. Oh, yeah. Tom's phone rings and Tom looks at me and goes, it's Shavo. <laughs> and I was like, go away. Shavo, the it's Shavo, the bass player. <laughs> Just call him the homie. Like, we're on our way to see Turnstile sold out at Brooklyn Bowl and Shavo's calling Tom. Let's talk about a good day. Like, yeah. you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. I like hung up and like looked right across and I was like cheese and I was like, later, Shavo. I got two new subscribers this week. Hey, That's yeah. a good day. <laughs> I mean, I, I wish... Knowing Shavo or having his phone number equated to more followers, but it doesn't. So you know, no, but it's, it's all a grind. You got to put it in. Right? <laughs> uh, Carl, that's your name. It's my name. I have, oh. a, I have a note here, and I'm trying to remember more why. Than I'm sure. I wrote these notes up for a while ago. He said, "Cool." It said, my, here's my note. It says, "Request for banjo playing punk on a train." Oh, oh, okay. So I mean, I was in Phoenix, Arizona. <laughs> It was many years ago, visiting family, 
and we rode the train from where my grandmother lived to First Friday, okay. downtown Phoenix. Right. And there was a punk rocker on the train. There was actually a whole little band, and they were like street folk punk cats. They had a bunch of sort of acoustic and wind-powered <laughs> instruments, and wind one power. of them had a <laughs> banjo. The, and the, 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 that a melodica? And the guy sat there, and I, could, I couldn't tell you what song he played now, because that was... So many, too many beers ago. But he sat there and played the banjo, and the train was packed because it was first Friday. I mean, packed, right? And I was expecting like some some sort of pandemonium and or dissent because banjo punk. <laughs> but none of that happened. Was he good? He was good. Okay. And so like he carried on and he played us actually all the way into first Friday. It was fantastic. And then they all sort of wandered off to play on the streets somewhere and, down and there. And you but... and everyone else on that train has a story that would never like you couldn't write this. No way. <laughs> That's not a Seinfeld episode. Suddenly there's a banjo playing punk on a train. Yeah. Like, there's just... nothing worse yeah. than a bad banjo playing punk. Yeah, that's true. Train. We have some history with banjo actually. I wouldn't know. <laughs> There's some banjo on some of the stuff from our old band. Mm. Yeah, we've always been weird. Our uh, our old where we recorded, the, one of the guys had a banjo tar on the, just hanging on the wall. Banjo so it's tar. like a it's built like a banjo, but it's six strings and it's tuned just like a regular guitar. And we we're in neck deep in the studio, and our guitar player Tim Flannery it was just like, "Hold on, <laughs> this track's not done. Give me this banjo. This this track needs some banjo." And I, Tom and I kind of looked at each other weirdly. Like, Okay, I mean it was my song. I was just like, well, it wasn't. It, you weren't cutting the actual so, okay. tape, right? It was okay. digital. Yeah. So, yeah. but he laid it on, and I was just like, mm, that stays. <laughs> yeah, it, it was, was crazy. Fantastic. Oh, we're we're gonna have to <laughs> we're gonna bury it a little bit. We're gonna bury it a little no, bit. It was very prominent. It was crazy. Is when like I showed it to people, I'd be like, I waved them to hear it, and be like, what do you think that is? And what we got most often was that is that a harp. <laughs> not, not a, <laughs> that's a fucking oh, banjo tar dog. Yeah, it was uh, it was venomous ways. Nice uh, uh, by Los Exeter. <laughs> yeah, that song was a oh, ripper. You you mentioned melodica when he started going into that yeah, story. I have one. Oh, I, yeah, I'm office. aware because the last gig we ever played, the gig where he quit <laughs> by text message. Because <laughs> it was an abysmal gig, yeah. but. Uh, you, you, we were at your apartment or whatever, and you were like playing it, and we're like, "Hey, we gotta go to the gig. Let's go." Oh, this sounds like Tom. I've always <laughs> been a dork, you know. And you know what? It's not the first, nor was it the last time I quit a band by text message. You know, for when Brian I, inevitably watches this, I quit. What do we call it? Biopolar. By Biopolar. Text Biopolar. So, uh, don't ever ask me to join your band. Uh, I will just probably quit my text message because the only bands I stay in long term are the ones I start. So, sorry, Josh. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a terrible hired gun. I've kind of learned this over the years. You know, isn't it like getting it's older right. is hacking yourself, you know? It, 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 if it makes you feel any better, I am deeply bitter. <laughs> 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 that was the gig that was going to get us to... No. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! I was, I was not ready for all that. I was Forever like, resentful. All right, Josh and I are finally talking about this and it's on camera. That was no the, big deal. And, he, and his response is... I'm deeply bitter. <laughs> that, was the, <laughs> that was the gig where Lacey Ferguson told me my tone sounded like shit. And she was right. Oh, R.I.P. Lacey. Lacey. I miss you. Lacey. Was it? Okay, hold up, hold up. Let's talk about the gig for the sake of content, because I don't fucking remember. That was many years ago. Was that the gig I didn't have a bass amp? No. Uh, that was... Because that gig sucked. Actually, probably... Yes, I think that is. But also, that was the gig where, mysteriously, after setting everything up and making sure it all worked, the second we go to start, we started with... Um, that song by Stone Temple Pilots. Da, 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 oh, yeah, bam. big open chord. Yeah, and big open. And the second we start, somehow my guitar cable came unplugged from my pedal board. <laughs> it was just sitting there, like a good half inch apart. Oh, and I'm like, I've done that. You, can't, you don't even feel it with your foot. It just. Whoosh. Yep. Because yeah, well, yeah. you know, it, it, it was, it was fun. Rock and Rileys. <laughs> Which isn't there anymore. That wasn't the show where we played with Dinner Music for the Gods, right? No, this was us just all, it was us for three hours. Okay, because I, I, I guess clearly I oh, had yeah, some resentment gigs. towards all the shows we did at Rock and Riley's because I don't remember any of them. I haven't done any of those. I think I if I remember it. correctly, I think it was the show, the only show of my life I showed up to via a bus with a pedal board <laughs> and a bass on my back. Nope. And we gave I gave you a ride. Was that it? I didn't have yeah. an amp? No, yeah. Rock, the thing about Rock... I apologize for this big long tangent. I know this isn't how my interviews normally go, but we got history. We're difficult. So we're really the thing about Rock and Riley's is, and you've never been there. No, I did not. Okay, so Hawaiian Marketplace. Okay, 
So it's on the strip. The strip. The yeah, strip. yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Parking the strip. Like, strip. Like, isn't a you, thing. You, there's a little alley. Yeah. You got to go. You got to know how to get to this alley. Like it goes past uh, the jockey club or something. Okay. And parking garage. And you know how to. Once you get there, you dump your crap, and then you got to go find parking. And I had, like I had to go Mexico. find the management for Ugh. the property. I had to go find the manager for the property and go back like twice to get damn pieces of paper to say, put this in your da- on your dash, you've got parking. Yeah. But we still had to drive like I had blocked down the road to, to park and then walk back. And I was just like, why does anybody play on the strip? <laughs> I mean, last time I had parking privileges at a place, it wasn't on the strip though, it was downtown. It was Hogs and Heifers, as a matter of fact. That surprises me. They didn't tell me, but I almost got to it. I definitely had the toe sticker on the van. When I, and that was with permission papers in my window. In my window. Yeah, I provided backline, so they gave me parking privileges. Nice. And VIP. And free drinks. Thanks. Yeah. Good time. <laughs> One time I saw Carl hop a fence over a parking ticket. Oh my god! It was <laughs> impressive. Also, I really got to give a shout out real quick to Kirkland Gym. <laughs> hey. Holy shit, this tastes like Christmas and bad decisions, man. <laughs> Woo, this is the best commercial I could ever do for Kirkland. <laughs> You're welcome. Kirkland, I'll take hey, my check anytime. Now. Your 80% blended scotch is a, is a thing to do, too. <laughs> oh. Anyway, moving on. Let's talk music. How about that? Let's do that. Is that what we're here for? We're, we're only how far uh, into this thing? <sighs> yeah. Uh, like, we half this, hour in we do this thing called what's good Wednesday and somehow we go for an hour every week we're really we good like, you know? we're really good <laughs> at you know jamming it up on camera before we're anything really else way longer than it needs to go before anything else let me do my job properly let's go ahead and hear a quick message from future Josh and now a word from our sponsors thanks past Josh it's baseball season and you know what that means time to hit the old diamond and grab some grub but Going to a game gets expensive quick, right? Well, good news! Select a Ticket is here to save you some dough. Select a Ticket has the best seats and best prices available for any event, including concerts, Broadway shows, and of course, sporting events. Experience the difference with SelectedTicket.com's all-in pricing with no added fees at checkout and no delivery fees. That means the price you see is the price you pay. Just for watching this video and for being part of Room 6 and for a limited time, you can use my affiliate link down in the description to get 10% off every purchase over $100 on merchandise and tickets to your next MLB game. Just enter coupon code MLB10 at checkout. Thanks to Selected Ticket for being a sponsor, and let's get back to the show. We're back! And, oh boy, we're uh, having fun. It, that's water, right? Where'd we go? Mm. Yes, it's water. Oh. It smells like juniper, so... Hey, you know what? Toast. Oh, you hmm. son of a... Let's do the time warp again. Beetle it out. Anyway. <laughs> it's just a jump to the left. Oh, that's a good one. All right. Here's to you and here's to me, and if ever we should disagree, then hell with you and here's to me. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, sorry. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, yeah, it's my freaking island that i got to clean up. I don't wipe it off. All right. Man, I want an island. No, you don't. You what think you do? Um, it gets in the way of your pot rack. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, it's don't get me started on pot racks. Anyway, we're back. I promise we're going to talk music. You guys. You guys. <laughs> Who are you people and how'd you get on my phone? <laughs> what are you doing in my house? Where are my pants? Anyway. <laughs> Let's talk earliest musical influence. And when I say that, I don't mean, oh, I grew up listening to this. I mean, can you remember that first moment where you're like, I want to do that? Yeah, high school band playing saxophone, right? Played saxophone in junior high and stayed with it in high school, but we didn't have any uh, electronical instruments at the, junior, at the junior high school level the, in my world. But in high school, we had like a strong rhythm section with bass guitar, regular guitar, you know, an actual drum set, along with like sort of your what you would expect percussion wise from like a high school slash want to be classical type of band. Right. Mm-hmm. But I remember, uh, getting put from alto sax to berry sax because the sort of fingerings and the notes were the same. And we had a surplus of alto saxophone players and I'm, well, I'm big and berry sax is big. And the band director was like, you're marching with berry sax. But in the interim, when I got to play the bass lines on the berry sax, along with the bass player who played a P bass, probably just through some little combo of some sort, who knows, a thing happened. 
And I thought to myself, I have to do with that, actually. This is bass, but that's bass. And then, so let's fast forward to being like 20 and having a job and my own money and working in a restaurant with a bunch of other people that were angry and wanted to play rock and roll music as well. One cat played guitar already. This other dude over here plays drums and has some stuff. And this guy wants to sing and about dead babies and shit. And like, I'm like, cool, let me go buy a bass. And I have a garage. And that's it. That's nice. Right? Like, <laughs> and, and now you're the lead guitarist. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a whole different... Well, many things have happened since right. then. <laughs> yeah, this, this could get really long. Over talking about, like, the scope of Tommaso. Uh, yeah, so for me, what happened? I, I've always, I've always like been an artist. You know what I mean? Like from was, like early as I can remember, I was like drawing shit and getting into it. And I didn't get into music till I was like probably twelve. But like when I got into it, it was just like it, it was always what I wanted to do. You know? So uh, I'm on cue. <laughs> anyway, yeah, no, this is always just what I wanted to do. And like I, by the time I was like. 14 able to like start making some money you know i uh i wanted to get a guitar i wanted to get drums i wanted to get drums really but i was in a situation with playing drums if you're like a, a teenager playing drums you got to know that like mommy and daddy are well off you know and, you, and, and, they and love the, you. i was just gonna yeah, say yeah, yeah. and they are so cool and you don't appreciate them you enough. can be yeah. sad all you yeah. want mommy and daddy oh, love you. my first band <laughs> we were, my first band we rehearsed at the drummer's house in a room in the house yeah not in the garage Yep. Yeah, see, I had to be Same. a full adult out the house before I had the... I rehearsed, yeah. you know, horns and stuff. I played harmonica. I sang. I did all kinds of other music when I was young, but never anything loud like like rock and roll music, right? right. And so, like, I had to be a full adult with my own, like, situation <laughs> before I could even get into yeah. any of that, you know? <laughs> Dude, I was, like, 14 years old in a band. And I remember, like, going to the drummer's house. He was, like, a year older than me, but, like, his parents fucking hated me. Cause I'm the bass player, and I show up, and they be like, every time he shows up, he rattles all the pictures on the walls. I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck do you want from me? Like, this is my job, you know. Um, tell your son not to play drums so loud. Yeah, exactly. You tell your son to be less good at drums, so I can like stop grooving so goddamn hard, you know. Um, but that yeah, boy dude, got the boogie woogie it in him, and it got to come out. <laughs> I've, I've never been without a band since the age of like 14, like ever once in my life. Again, this is like something I've. Always done. I don't know what I'd be doing if I was not in a band. I'd probably. You'd be. I know what you'd be. It'd doing. be bad. You'd, you'd be. And a we're not talking about it. Oh, wait. No. You, it would be bad. You'd <laughs> be selling pop. It'd probably be bad. <laughs> It'd be bad. I I can be pretty ridiculous when I want to. Be. <laughs> yeah. So it's good to channel that into a healthy, <laughs> I will say this. art form. You know? I, I will say this. I put you on blast earlier about the whole r- r- rock and roll thing, but honestly, it has been a treat to watch you like become a man over the years and and become a father and just watch like yeah he still smokes pot but he's not a pot head i mean pot pays our bills pot right, pays dude. our bills yeah pot like, keeps food in my daughter's mouth so, <laughs> yeah. and, yeah, and not yeah, on like, the not on the streets folks right yeah. like, <laughs> well the legalization of pot helps a lot but i i honestly though when you know somebody and they're a certain kind of way and then you, over the years you just based on your posts alone and the fact you had a kid. <laughs> How did a kid forces you to, like, you know, you got kids. Uh, yeah. That's you're just taking me back to old You didn't like, learn your lesson. I got one. He's got one. We're, we're. I, I, you're right. You're just taking me back to the old self-depreciation days of yep. Instagram before. I was like, I guess I got something to live for. You know? yeah. <laughs> but honestly, I, I, I remember me before, well, before having a kid, but also before getting married, just like suddenly you're like, wait, I'm an adult. How'd that happen? Yeah. Who let me do the adult things? I need an adult. Yeah. Wait, I need... I'm I need, not a, I need adult no, adult. <laughs> that. It's funny, though, because I've gotten similar sen- sentiments in my life, and I appreciate it. Kind words, you no know. Worries. It's cool. It is weird now, like, I'm an adult, and it took... I'm in my mid-30s playing rock and roll in Las Vegas, selling weed professionally, and having a kid, and everyone's like, look, you finally did it! And I'm like... <laughs> This is what I've done the entire <laughs> fucking been for two years. time. What do you? What, this is who I am. But yeah. I'm just now getting paid for it. Um, so, yay! Honestly, <laughs> uh, when I came to apply for that job that I didn't end up getting because I wasn't qualified remotely for an IT job that his company was offering, uh, and we expect a lot. No, no, no. <laughs> what they crazy. were off, what they were asking, <laughs> they were asking for something that you. I have a very specific set of skills. It wasn't that, yeah. <laughs> but they were asking for that. But you came out, and I was just like. Holy crap! He looks like a, 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 a he looks like a person who does business. <laughs> it was amazing. 
Anyway, back to music, back to music. I love that too. People are like, <laughs> well, actually, we played at my job here recently, and one of the comments I got was like, bro, you get on stage and you turn into a different person. I'm like, no, that's the person I've always been. You just know yeah. me as someone else. <laughs> I do remember you playing, uh, we played at the Cheyenne Saloon. Bro, I drove past oh, it no, no, I, adrenaline. Fucking, I flashed back to that. Adrenaline, I was like, I mean. Because now it looks like sketchy. Well, yeah, was, yeah, we did play that. It was like one of Rick, the last shows. Rick Eubanks like, tried his best to get adrenaline to be like not sketchy. Yeah. But that area. Anyway, again. Especially that time, yeah. Sorry. This is what happens when friends come over and uh, you've got a past. We're I, talking about music. I get a lot of people in here who I'm their first interview. And it, half the interview is me breaking down the ice. It's, right. It's like, okay, it's okay. You're in a safe space. Here, we, we got history. <laughs> I've, been, I, I've interviewed them in another band, Los Exeter, uh, at, at his house, where I'm doing the intro. Wild. I'm doing the intro, <laughs> and my former drummer, Sean Flume, passes a joint across. The, as <laughs> it, it just gets passed around it's while I'm talking. House. I'm like, you fuckers couldn't wait. You couldn't wait till I Ooh. dunked the intro at least? Ooh. Actually, so Josh told this story when he was at my job applying for a job, <laughs> and I was like, wrong story to tell. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're the only place in town with a consumption lounge. <laughs> but no, actually, I do got to give a shout out to Josh, too, because we made him really uncomfortable by saying, yo, bring your production to us, because like, we're not coming. So, uh, you were, the, <laughs> if, if not the first, I think you were the first time I went mobile. I've done it in the we past. We said, you guys come at your house and be quiet. Fuck that. You coming to us won't be loud. So, uh, really. <laughs> we're Josh, loud. We're loud guys. I don't know, man. Like, Josh, Josh is a real one. All I'm trying to say, shout out to him and all you guys for supporting Aww. his channel. Thanks, guys. Butterfly in the sky. Boom, 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 I can go twice. What the fuck are we talking about? I don't know. You had questions about music, right? Yeah, right. So, we're we talked origins. about, we're we're talked about earliest musical influence. Uh, our, our tangents have kind of eaten into some of the my usual interview questions, which is good for you because they're the usual interview questions we all hate. Yeah. Like, I won't bother asking you, well, how would you describe your band's musical style? It Lame. Really, it, it really is a blend. It's a blend of Stab we rock. suck. No, actually, you don't. But there's definitely like a blues backbone there. Yes. Yeah. But not, you're not just playing Brown Eyed Girl you know, or uh, Mustang Sally. No. You're, you're, you're using the blues background, but you're also... Going off in various things and coming back, which I, I can appreciate as a musician, but they also have fun on stage, That's which is true. so important. If you're a new musician, listen to this. If you're not having fun, figure it out. Find something else to do, or or figure out what's why why are you not having fun? Because it's just music, you know, it's just rock and roll, or or not, but whatever it is, it's just music. If you're not having fun, then what's the goddamn point? Yeah, just give up. Yeah, fuck. No, man. Every band Teach the I, children, Tom. Every time I was in a band that I was having fun, you know what I did? I quit via text message. Well, I'm so, sorry. You didn't have fun. <laughs> that night wasn't fun for any of us. Trust me. But hey, no, it, it, it is hard to like mm. just find people who give a fuck and like <clears throat> want to do what you do. But and you know, to to a certain point, you're not having fun if you don't if you're not comfortable, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> for the, the 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 younger musicians, know your gear. No. Know your seriously. Know your gear because when you go out and play live, something's gonna break. It's inevitable. It might not happen the first time or the second time or the third time, and then you're gonna be like, ah, yeah, I got my shit dialed in. And then the fourth or fifth time, you're gonna go out and something's just gonna go. And also to that right? point, <laughs> to that point, know your gear because you don't need more variables. Right. You just learn how to keep a bare bones. So system. know your okay. gear. Yeah. Know your band. Right. Like. Know your band. Yeah, make sure they spend ain't time like... with your band outside of band practice. We, well, and we aren't like every other, but Tom and I have been running around together for longer than we've been playing music together. Yeah, but know your band. Be homies outside of band practice. If you know that's the thing, that's that's and play music you love. If you're in a band and you love playing guitar and you go join this band because they have an opening and you're just like, I'm gonna be in this band because this is what I want to do right now. And then you get into it and you learn the material and you're like. Band the songs politely and professionally find the exit and, and also I, it's okay don't don't it's leave okay them, don't leave like, them like high and dry with, <laughs> with a gig about to happen no politely and professionally those yes. are the key words right like, <laughs> like I did when I no quit, Josh actually be a text <laughs> no <laughs> when he did that we had nothing else on the books so I, I <laughs> profesh yes profesh yeah. but it, you quit I don't know if you realize you left I, don't I was packing up it, really. and you texted before I was done. Packing up the cake. I can't do I don't think I can do this anymore. I, I have to quit the band. Oh shit. That is, this is a little rough. And, and, I'm, and I, I'm sure that certain 
not safe for work words came out of my mouth. And Sean was sitting there because I think I was giving him a ride. You got to ride with your girlfriend away. Well, and let's not and I was like, okay, over okay, okay. the fact that Sean lived with me throughout this entire yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, let's not also anyway. forget the fact that clearly there was several shows I wasn't happy with at Rock and Riley's before that night. Not just so, not, not just the suspense, but but back to the top. Play rock and roll. Was it? We only fun. we only played there like three or four times. Jason yeah. Boyd. Yeah, uh, there was a few I didn't like, and that yeah. is more than getting back to music. Getting, we're, we're, we're getting off the top. Josh is pretty Good cool. Push. Josh is pretty cool. The suspense was fun. Yeah. Uh, hey. I mean, hey. Hey. I'm pretty cool for a 50 year old. <laughs> yeah, dude. Don't ever not bring your bass amp to the show. <laughs> or your bass. Well, that's another story, Carl. I don't need it. We don't need to bore the children with that one. Let me, let me ask you something. You ever bring a guitar case with no guitar in it? No, I've never I just that I one, forgot. Actually. I forgot both. Yeah. Well, you're like you're in a hurry, you're, and, mean, and you toss it in. You don't notice the change in weight. And to give myself one on the chin, I've left a pedal board behind. I left before a whole, too. I, so I, I left get a whole like, guitar. It happens. I, you know. I left a whole ass guitar. <laughs> It you, you OG Room Sixers from like season one where I really drove this into the dirt. I used to ask a question. Have you ever lost any gear? I would say from the highs of your dream gig to the lows of losing gear. You ever lose anything? It was, I was doing, I was finding my way. Yeah. But, but I, no, that's I remember. That's a good question though because oh, thank you. I'm thinking about it as you asked that. I lost a lot of fucking gear. Well, here's what <laughs> I, I lost a lot of cables and Inevitably stuff. though, I did the thing an interviewer shouldn't do and I kept interjecting my own personal story into oh. it. You ever have a conversation with somebody and they have to turn it and make it always like, yeah, well, when I, every single time, <sighs> recipes, mother-in-law. Anyway, we played a battle of the bands, which again, red flag right there at Hooters Casino. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Where you load in by the, the dumpster. Go. That sounds like a vibe. Okay. No, <laughs> no, no. And we lost. We were well, good. Hold this up, was, hold up. This was the suspense before you. Who actually wins the battle? Uh, a band the called a, a band called uh, Stick Shadow or Shadow Man or something like that. Exactly. And they played and they played Michael. covers. But anyway, I was loading the I was loading the thing. Nerds. Kind of pissed, but I was loading the van, <laughs> and I left the guitar in its case on the ground. And I got home and I was like, I really just did that, didn't I? And I called, and of course nobody. And I missed that guitar like I missed Jerry Orbach from Law and Order. That's a good one, dude. With the, he had the teeth. <laughs> the teeth that just don't quit. You're like, man, that man is gonna bite my Actually, soul out of Jerry before. Orbach. Uh, if you don't know who Jerry Orbach is, you're too young to be watched. I'm just kidding. You know, Walt Whitman and Montgomery Cliff to bury around here somewhere. Better them than me. Um, he donated his eyes when he died. He donated his eyes to New York. Like two two people are walking <laughs> around New York with his eye. In their head. <laughs> you just said you donated to New York. I like, just like to the point to the here. <laughs> Jerry, like my, fi my final contribution to this city. Here are my <laughs> eyes. Friends, homies, countrymen, care. lend me your eyes. <laughs> Every single one of you gets a tiny slice. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> again, tangent, sorry. <laughs> That's a funny one, dude. I forgot about Jerry. No worries. Um, so, so we, we know your, your, the, your band's musical style is, is a hodgepodge a little bit, but it's mostly blues based, right? I'd say blues is like our most common theme, which compared to a lot of our past musical projects is, yeah. <laughs> is a departure. Yeah, compared yeah, to most yeah. Exeter. That's true. Yeah, we're, we're definitely right. trying to keep that theme consistent. So, so yeah. Instead, what I'm going to say is I wanted to talk about what's your favorite show memory as Algorithm. You've been doing it a while now. Ooh. So, and I just turned two. Yeah, yep. we did. So we're a wee little toddler. What is we your are. favorite show memory? And I, by that I mean, what is that one that just sticks in your mind? Is that was crazy, or that checked off some rock star wish list thing, or somebody went to jail, or you know that one ran off the rails like Rock and Riley. <laughs> so, what what is your favorite show memory? I'm gonna refill on some whiskey while you tell tells the people. You something. got one because I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Yeah, I mean, look, we've played a bunch of shows. We've played some really excellent shows because we're fortunate to be. Uh, playing music in Las Vegas. Yeah, that part. But I just, for now, have to keep going back to the first Algorithm show. Because for me, anyway, it was really important because it was the first live show back at a pretty important club in Las Vegas at Backstage Bar and Billiards. 
And we are stupid asses. With our band who were new, I mean, we had been woodshedding for approximately a year at this point, you know, throughout pandemic stuff, COVID yeah. shenanigans and whatnot. And me also, like, being rehoused and doing a bunch of shit. Yeah, Carl was homeless. It was the whole thing. Legit. <laughs> Thanks, COVID. <laughs> um, so, but we got this opportunity to not just play the first show back from COVID, but to open the first show back from COVID. And, you know, as opening a show goes, that was, like, epic. And we, we kind of, like, set ourselves up to be openers. We spent that whole first year as a band really just... Just opening shows, and I think that's a good thing because we're really good at it because it's a thing that we do. But we got up to play in front of a full house, and it wasn't like sold out, but it was still a full house at Triple B for not only our band's first show as this band, but as like the first show back from COVID, and the crowd was very responsive. And then the rest of the night just went like went off like butter. Every single band was on point. The whole show was just like pop, 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 pop. And like that just like like we're supposed to like this is what we're doing. Let's go. Like that's a great yeah. like I can't imagine a better way to start a band. Yeah. Right? Like <laughs> do, you, do you remember who headlined that? Um, Fear the Bear was there. Was Circus Six. All right, show. I wasn't Circus there. Six. So yeah, I wasn't at that show. I was at, I think I was yeah. at like the next show. Oh, it was like dude, it was it was summer of twenty one. It was June twenty one. Yeah. But it was weird. It was I got, still and, pandemic, and like no funny, one. funny story. I got COVID at that show. Oh damn. <laughs> I think we all did. <laughs> Comedy. <laughs> and you know, and what's funny is full circle, our first outing as a band was at Fremont Country Club next door hanging out with our friends in the band core. This was literally it's like March freaking fifteenth. It was like right before the world ended. Like the last show before the world shut down. And we were at that same bar, hanging out with our friends, passing around a doobie and trying to like talk to each other like, yeah, we're starting a new band. It's going to be cool, you know? And the world shut down. So it was a cool first full circle moment to come back there and yep. play like a packed show, yep. which was cool. Um, <laughs> we haven't done it since at that <laughs> bar. Uh, and so I just to echo Carl's sentiment. That was really rad to debut as a band and being like, this is crazy. Because like we've been in a lot of bands. We've paid a lot of dues. We played a lot of like shows for no one in like podunk bars in the middle of nowhere. So to have that be our first show was like a cool moment. Uh, but I gotta say, like, I'm really proud of everything we've done this year, which has kind of been <laughs> the antithesis of what Carl's described. Because <laughs> we've been doing it like DIY as fuck all year long. And yeah. that's what's been cool because I think that's what like is, that energy is why Carl and I have been playing music for as long as we have, just because like we're passionate about what we do and we're not afraid to put in the work. And this year, like the first show we played was at a tattoo parlor in literally a parking lot, a, 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 a sidewalk in front yeah. of a retail shop with like not a legit PA system, not anything. But there was like, a, like I wanted to go to that show and review it, but I couldn't. Dude. And and there were a lot of. Kids. I'm happy to hear there that was, I missed. <laughs> there was so many kids just having the time of their life, yeah. and that's where it's like. There were kids crowd me, surfing in the parking lot. Yeah, well, and again, we've been doing this a long time. That's ballsy. We're, we're older. You've dropped your... <laughs> we, we, we've seen it. We've been playing music in bars for over a decade now. So to be doing an all-ages thing and just see the kids having fun mm -hmm. was like a cool, like, Let this me... is this is why we do it, you know? Because these guys are loving everything we're doing. So that's that's yeah. mine. Two things. One, I was at like the second or third show after quarantine, and it was at Triple V. And I, re I remember just thinking like, it doesn't matter what the hell you do on stage. This place is packed and they're going to love you. You could literally go up there and just play harmonica. <laughs> uh, play banjo, hey. But <laughs> hell yeah. No, other, banjo punk badly. The other thing is, have you played or been to Eagle Area Hall? No. There's not, actually. They have no. a lot of heavy... I really need to go. I, I have a lot of heavy It's, it's all ages. There. Here's It's a weird situation. Shout out to Eagle Area Hall. I've done a venue review of them. Um, and I've reviewed more than one show there. Actually, no, only one show there. I haven't been back yet. Sorry. But... It's a fraternal order of eagles yes, kind of thing. Right. Their whole thing is it's not veteran it's associated. It's about it's the one. No, I think it's a different one okay. than what you're. Well, I had a cousin affiliated, affiliated with one of those around here, and I, I used to spend many drunken nights there. So I was just but, checking to make sure. It was no, there. but this one is you go in and there's like a little vestibule, a little lobby, and there's a door here, members only, and that's their bar. And then to the left is where the live music is, and they have a separate bar, and I'm like. That's so cool. They 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 saw this opportunity, but also they they're like, yeah, we're going to let you do this, and the bills there are like ten bands deep 
Yeah, it's, it's a lot. It's crazy. It's, it's a lot of touring, like technical death metal yeah. bands yeah, yeah, yeah. and like black metal and stuff like that. But I, the thing I about it, it's, it's all ages. There. It's fantastic. Yeah, you get, you get, you get carded and and you know you wear a different color bandwidth. Yep, yep. Um, drinks are cheap. No, and, so, like when I was really young in Hutchinson, Kansas, when I used to go to when I was starting to like discover DIY shows and go to like little small shows like that. Right. The Eagles Club in Hutchinson, Kansas, used to host heavy music. For right. the local bands, and it was the same kind of thing. So, like the thing about Eagle Area Hall, though, is <laughs> it's the only place in Henderson, especially Old Town Henderson, that where all, it's all ages because you got like right. Gold Mine and you got uh, um, what else is on Water Street there for live music? Um, oh. I don't remember, but you've, you've, you've got other places where you got to be 21 and up, but yep. so it's you're like almost guaranteed a crowd, yeah, and yeah. it's a lot of bands. It's like, how much is the ticket? 10 bucks, and I'm getting I'm seeing eight bands, okay. Yeah, all right, fuck it. <laughs> Bang for the fuck, baby. Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, last question. You made it. Yay. Whoa. <laughs> so, what time is it? How long have we been here? I feel like I did the time warp again. Well, this, this, yeah, this, one may, this one may take a minute to answer. Meatloaf's cool, though, right? We all like Meatloaf? Yeah, we all like Meatloaf. Well, I yeah. dressed up as Meatloaf right, for Halloween dude. one year Except and played a show as Meatloaf. Come Carl on. Carl makes a we great like... Meatloaf, and anyone who says otherwise is wrong. In both ways. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask. I was going to ask. <laughs> Ketchup or, or something else. Anyway, um, something else. This <laughs> layer. Meatloaf like never onion. sang in that song. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He whoa, wasn't whoa. in. Think about it. He's dead by the time the song happens. By the time. Meatloaf's still alive. What are you talking about, bro? No, no. In the, the Rock and Roll Picture Show, the Time Warp. Oh, he never. Oh, he's no. Oh, he doesn't sing that song. That's yeah, true. that's what I was saying. Yeah, 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 you just yeah, said yeah. I love Meatloaf. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> Meatloaf wasn't in the song, dude. No. I thought true. I just schooled the Meatloaf. Meatloaf was Meatloaf was there. No. We don't talk about Bad Out of Hell 2, okay? All right. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying Bad Out of Hell too. We don't talk about that. That's just. I won't bad. do that. That's just. Bad. No, I won't do that. It's just bad. He but Bad Out of Hell, bro. Oh my god, classic. So anyway, but, I'm gonna shovel lemon in your mouth. <laughs> Who starts a song like that? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's crazy. <laughs> Crazy. Oh, that's Aerosmith. Anyway, you guys, you guys know I, I host a podcast, right? I'm just like step, this guy's step is slip. I'm sorry, you being a good sport. Really. So the difference this is, is why the difference is we're doing alcohol, they're doing pot. So they kind of shut yeah, up. So you're getting uninhibited. Uninhibited. <laughs> you're getting. You're getting. Pause, my pause. Words. Play. I'm way better on weed. Anyway, take it away. Right on. <laughs> Last question. Ready? Yes. Now right. they're all nice and warmed up. One, a two, a you know what to do. So, circling back to the uh, earliest musical influence question. This is a question I ask of all my prey. Yes, if you watched more than one interview here, you know what's coming. Let's pretend we're talking to the children. Let's pretend we're, we're, we're talking to new musicians, but more importantly, let's pretend we're talking to little you. The little you that said, I want to do that. What is one thing... That you wish someone had told you before you went down this twisted road that is music, and don't say change your strings. All right, all right. Because I went on this tangent literally on the way here. Oh God! I'll just. I've been here. doing it a lot lately because we just have a uh, an uber young fan, which love you, Nevin. You a real one. Anyway, my advice would be, fuck them. Whatever they say. Okay, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> fuck them. You know what I mean? If they don't think you're good enough. Fuck them. If they don't like the genre, fuck them. If they don't like your music video or your approach or your tone or whatever, fuck them. Do art for you and you will always win. But when if they do like you, fuck them. If, if they do like you, come and do their podcast or, or videos or, you know, or, or whatever. I'm don't, just saying, don't, support don't, the people that support you. Don't, don't fuck me. But all the, people, all the people that don't support you, Fuck them. They're not who you're making it for. You're making it for you. Well, I won't be using that a lot. Anyway, I'm just kidding. Was that too vulgar? I can do a take two. I honestly forgot to tell you this. I don't censor this. I put a disclaimer at the front of the video saying this may contain content not suitable for minors because I'm not going to invite musicians over. Give them alcohol and tell them don't to swear. It's, I'm a pirate. I, it's, I went to military school. I worked in restaurants. It's... It's it's like an art form in and of itself. So like, I should have not to cuss. I'm gonna look you in the face. No, okay. <laughs> I, I should have told you this. Um, sorry, a little behind the scenes of what I normally tell acts when they get here. We're but, yeah, I don't censor you. And if you can't handle watching this, then you obviously didn't see the disclaimer at the front. So fuck them. You can't handle algorithms and music. 
Um, you with the face. <laughs> Your turn. <laughs> Wear Captain, earplugs. You Captain Lou Albano look at no, I'm just kidding. No, Where? seriously. <laughs> old Carl would go to about oh, God, yes. 15-year-old Carl who's on the cusp. So 15-year-old Carl who learned how to drive at a very young age, way before 15, and was on the cusp of owning a driver's license and had keys to a car already. And a proclivity for going to concerts and a job. So I had money in my wallet to buy tickets to said concerts. I would tell 15, 16-year-old Carl to buy some earplugs. And wear them because I spent my entire youth going to concerts at the Kansas Coliseum, the Cotillion Ballroom, in Cahoots, um, Rita's Little Love Town, and so on and so forth. All these music venues in Wichita, Kansas, all my Kansas people know that most of these places are gone. The Cotillion, though, 10 out of 10. Anyway, but now I'm 40 and I wear, I've been wearing earplugs religiously for a, quite a long time now for band practice, for shows, my shows, other people's shows. And uh, I, it has definitely helped slow down the tinnitus. But uh, yeah, wear your earplugs. Oh, oh yeah. You know what the sound of <laughs> you know what the sound of regret is? <laughs> tinnitus after a show, whether oh. you played it or you went to it or both. Yeah. Yeah. And, and seriously, what? Sitting there on the couch, going, hearing it, and you're like, "Well, there's another note I'm never gonna hear." Look, again. look at Lemmy. I what? Love, I love me my Lemmy, but look at Lemmy. Look at yep. Pete Townsend. Pete Townsend, who has been who had to spend many years off the road because his hearing was so yep. bad, and he just can't. And actually, to this day, I, he, just, he just can't. Like, <laughs> and I, yes, I'm a firm believer. If you see me out at a show doing like the, the, taking photos and videos for a review. I'm wearing the bright orange ones. Yep. I'm, I don't care. I got them free. I got a big bucket of yeah, them free. Yeah, the bucket. Yep. But three ninety nine. The thing is about that, I purposely wear the bright orange ones because I want people to know. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm standing not ignoring you. to get the shots I need. Sometimes I'm literally my head is next to the speaker at Triple B. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like it's not quiet. <laughs> and I I made the mistake once of not wearing them at Triple B and getting the same shots, and I regretted it. And yep. to this day, um, yeah, wear wear earplugs. What I found interesting is, even at uh, Red Dwarf, where I saw you guys actually headline, or go last. <laughs> hey, we're a headlining band and only headliner, two time. Headlining just means you go last. But anyway. It's man. an old car. Sometimes a headliner just falls down. Yeah. A little. <laughs> can we, it just falls can right we, on your fucking But head even there, I was wearing them because yeah. um, I knew it was a small space. going to be loud. But also... I can hear lyrics so much better. Yep. I can hear things like, oh, there's the hi-hat. They filter out some of the noise. They or, filter out a lot of the I noise. I can hear the ride symbol at a heavy metal, death metal band. Yep. You know, things like that. It fil- It's like it's like putting ice in whiskey. It filters out a lot of the high yep. and the lows. Especially if you're in a room that has really tough acoustics, mm-hmm. like Red Dwarf. Yep. I love Red Dwarf, but the acoustics are not ideal in the room. Just the way the space is laid out and where the speakers are and stuff. And you get a lot of like unpleasant resonating frequencies that build up. All that sound has to go somewhere. And if it doesn't have anywhere to go, it literally actually builds up in yep. the corners and the room under the bar. Mm-hmm. And so the earplugs actually really help like and turn they, some and, of that And they noise can't just prop down. the doors open. Like, no, they gotta, absolutely you know, not. The they have neighbors open. that have karaoke that's almost as loud as they are. Dude! <laughs> I went outside to get some some air, some air and I heard that Latino place oh, next yeah. door. I'm like, Holy now that place shit. reminded me of National City, California. Like every Mexican restaurant in National City, California, has just the like a, you know ten thousand watt karaoke system in the corner, and somebody singing karaoke while I'm trying to eat my octopus tacos. You know, so I just want to be the antithesis of everything they just said and say that if you're not gonna wear your plugs, here's Don't. my hack. So you're saying you're up front by the mains right in your ear. Yeah. That's where I hang out. Dude. <laughs> I, I'm literally, if you're in front of the speakers, they can't blow your fucking head off. You're only getting your head blown off by the guitar amplifier. You're hearing the band the way they're hearing themselves. And that's <laughs> Not at Triple B, cool. man. <laughs> triple B, everything goes through this, those means. But if you're... Also, this right is here, right here's the, the, the subwoofer. Going so, boom, 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 boom. So, so here's me at the show. Here's the mains. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> I've seen it. I'm right it's here. True. I'm telling you my hack. Because if you want to hear what the band sounds like, that's what you do. Honestly, <laughs> my, and, uh, my hack, especially ouch. for Triple B. My, he said, and ouch. <laughs> I'm deaf as fuck. I don't know. What? Dude. I just forget. Yeah. My, my hack, especially for Triple B, because they know me there and I know the, I know the place. But once they I... the big daddy. they the homies, right? Dude, once I, get my, once I get what I need, I immediately go to the side. Because I can hear everything perfectly clear. And yet, I'm not... Feel like I'm going deaf. And, you know, I'm also not in the crowd. That's what you can do when you have a camera. They'd be like... Fucking come on stage. Dude, I don't know what it is about carrying a... right here, dude. We don't even care. 
Carrie. I don't know what it is about carrying the D, my my actual camera. You want the guitar, dude? Take people, the solo. People get out of the way. <laughs> Literally, at um, I was at uh, Apocalypse in the Desert uh, Metal Fest day two, and more than once on the Fremont Country Club side of things, right there at the barricade, the security guard was like, "Do you want to go in front of the car?" I'm like, okay. Fucking send it. I'm done, sir. <laughs> Don't take bad pictures. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I do when I'm in those situations. The like, thing is, I actually don't like taking those up the nose shots too many times. It, it's kind of like I want to show pictures of like what the audience sees. You need a zoom yeah. lens. Yeah. However, if I go to like a big show where there's a press pit and you only get like the first three songs to take photos, then I'm just going to be like, everything, everything, and I'll sort it out later. So on, that hasn't on uh, yet. my confirmation text message to Josh to let him know we were doing the show, Ooh. I sent him the gift that said, I'm just going to send it. Send it! So that is the theme of this show, <laughs> is I'm just going to send it. And with that, I'm going to say thank you very much for watching and hanging in there while we went all sorts of places. And thank you for being on the channel. Bro, we triple fisted. This is, they're all done. We did great. This was, look, we timed <laughs> this. I couldn't have done better myself. Not my first rodeo, pal. You're doing but great, buddy. Hey, but hey, hey. hey oh, are we on camera? We are. If you want to pick up your Room 6 mug, we'll do a proper out. Thanks for uh, <laughs> slamming down the can there right by the mic. Appreciate you. Proper out. I need like a sip in my Room 6 cup. Bro. You see, what that is called is ASMR. Yes. And uh, Carl, let's go ahead and uh, I'm empty too, you know? I Thanks, Josh, this. for having us. Interview's over and they're they're pouring more drinks. Uh, we're delinquents, right? So we don't give a damn about anything. I'll, but we we do want to thank Josh for having us because uh, we can't support this delinquency without supporters like you. And so uh, shout out to Room Six and channels like his for fucking supporting local bands, right? I mean, what else can I say? Stick around. I I should have talked about this earlier. Stick around. We're gonna have a music video from them, and then I'll catch you in the outro. Uh, we in the make time, music videos. Yes. Wait, we make music videos. In the meantime, I have been putting this off for. Oh, okay, I never. Heard. In the meantime, <laughs> remember to be amazing, and we'll see you uh, in a little bit here. Say bye. Bye. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Is this more gin? What did you do? <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> yeah. okay, I'm kidding. I'm kidding.
I want to thank Algorithm for coming on the channel. It was a great interview and an awesome music video. If you want to see more from them or find out where they're playing, check out the, uh, the links down in the description for all their social media stuff. Other than that, if you want to see more videos like this, please click up here. If you want to subscribe, it really does make a difference. Click up there. Don't forget to ring the bell so you get notified when I post new stuff. And if you want to hear my own music, which is not like theirs, click over there. <laughs> Remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time on Room 6. Say goodbye, guys. Goodbye, guys! Who are you people, and how'd you get in my phone? Ba-da-ba-ba-da-ba-ba. -ba -ba -ba.